you pay for IT one way or the other. You pay for it. So you can either pay for it up front and stave off the attacks and make life better for yourself and the people who work there and get great organization and just be a better run company. Um, or you can get ransomed and pay for it later and get nothing back for the money. Robert here with Let's Make IT Simple. We got Travis as always, and uh, we got a, another interesting subject to talk about today. Um, these ones, whenever we have subjects like this, it almost, it almost, it's there's nothing funny about it, but it almost sounds comical to say it out loud. Dallas, yeah, the city of the Dallas, city. got hacked. Right, the so whole city, the whole city. We uh. We got one from the archives, Costa Rica getting hacked, the country. Um, this isn't new by any means, but um, it is it is new news. This just happened uh, this week and um, try to get this video out quick so it's relevant. Um, but May 3rd, 2023, city of Dallas got hacked. Um, let's talk about this, Travis. What What's the deal? Why are... Why are big government agencies like the city of Dallas, Texas, getting hacked? Um, yeah. Not to nitpick on Dallas specifically. Yeah. We don't know all the details. Definitely not. But wh- why, why, why are these things happening? Yeah. Well, so like you said, we, we feel for you, Dallas. Like this is not, you know, we're not having fun at your expense here at all. This is terrible. And we hope that you recover soon. But uh, nobody's immune. You know, uh, everybody's a target. Um, big cities, especially our targets, um, you know, they have the ability to uh, release large amounts of money and pay people who are criminals who are, you know, putting together ransoms. And so they're definitely going to be a target. But, you know, I have found um, that, unfortunately, uh, a lot of, you know, government ran agencies, you know, police departments, fire departments, utilities companies, they they have um, they don't have the funding they need to make this stuff happen in a lot of cases, right? I don't know if that's Dallas's problem uh, or not, but there's a lot of folks out there who uh, could use a lot more funding to make make this happen. They don't have the teams they need. Sometimes they don't have the direction they need. You know, a lot of times uh, IT has been somewhat of an afterthought, and so while they have well-meaning people and people who are enthusiastic, they may not always have the skill set or the talent to really execute the security that they want and put the safeguards in place that they, that they need to have in place. So it can be a combination of issues, but generally speaking from what I've seen, it tends to be not enough budget, uh, not enough talent um, and not enough will, right. To make it happen. And so as a result, they're often more exposed, even more than, you know, small businesses, you know, that's what I've seen. To to back that up, I actually have a I actually have an article here um, from CNN, and I'm going to quote it. It says Quentin Rhodes Herrera, a Dallas based cybersecurity executive, told CNN that when he is hired to test the cybersecurity of state and local governments, quote, we commonly find their security posture to be weaker than that of the average corporate company. Now, I thought that was an interesting quote because. Uh, and, and and obviously it lends to what you're saying. Companies a lot of times are thinking about, hey, if we get hacked, if uh, if we have a ransomware attack, uh, what's that going to do to our business? Do you think that this is something that maybe a, a, a government agency doesn't think about as much, or or isn't as aware of, or what 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 would what what do you yeah. think leads to to that? Good question. I'm not a psychologist. So, you know, my answer here is very subjective. But, you know, when you've got a small business owner, right, you know, they're putting their, their selves on the line and they're, they're risking a lot with their business. So uh, they personally are going to take the hit when something happens to their company. Whereas in larger organizations, maybe it's not as personal. So maybe that's part of it. I'm guessing here. I don't know. Um, there's also, you know, just maybe the sort of mindset on how funds get allocated and what's really important, maybe very, very different, you know, trying to explain to a police department or a fire department that, you know, a certain amount of money needs to be spent on their information technology might be a difficult thing to do when they have these real desires of, yeah, but we want to get these, this other equipment, this truck or these cars or these cameras or vests or whatever it is. Like we, you know, they have other places they want to spend the money. So it is probably kind of getting pushed back into a corner. 
Um, and I, uh, that happens a lot with, that even does happen, you know, in, in the corporate world, right? With private businesses, IT is they keep thinking about it as like a cost center instead of seeing it as what it really is, is an enabler to actually help you accomplish um, the goals of your business, right? Um, and I, I, let me say this. In my opinion, I'm biased and I have, I got a dog in the hunt. So I, you know, I'm going to, you know, acknowledge that, but, um, you pay for it one way or the other, you pay for it. So you can either pay for it up front and stave off the attacks and make life better for yourself and the people who work there and get great organization and just be a better run company. Um, or you can get ransomed and pay for it later and get nothing back for the money. Uh, you know, so you, it's, it's up to you when you want to spend it, uh, and how, you know, and how you want to spend it, but you're going to spend it. It's just a matter of time. That's a, <laughs> that's an interesting way of putting it. Um, wish we could put that up in lights. Then that makes it a little, a little easier for, for businesses to understand. Now, as a, as a business owner, like you, like you mentioned, got a dog in the hunt, you own a as a as a as a CEO of a of an IT company, um, what are and I know that we we work with some government agencies. We've dealt with people who have um, who have requested our services, um, potential clients, whatnot. What what are some things that you've run into? Because I know we've had yeah. uh, some dealings with different different government agencies here. We definitely appreciate you know all the work that that everyone does here. But just from the IT perspective, what are some what are some some things that we've that you've seen, Travis? Yeah, it's pretty, I've seen kind of a common pattern um, for a lot of these agencies. They've had a small IT staff. Usually it's it's external. It's usually somebody they've hired, but it's like one person or maybe a two person show that's doing their IT. Um, it's very reactive. You know, they're, they're waiting for, they're waiting for a problem to happen. And then they pick up the phone to call somebody to fix that problem. But there's no like overarching goal. There's no purpose. There's no strategy. There's no planning. It's just kind of like, Hey, our email stopped working. Can you help us? And they get billed by the hour. And so they've got this one man, two man show that's benefiting a lot at their, you know, uh, from their pain, right. You know, something bad happens to them, terrible for them. Great for their IT guy. Uh, so he's not really incentivized to make that stop happening. Um, so I see that a lot. I see that the budgets are often uh, a fraction of what they would need to be to actually put these, uh, you know, these organizations where they ought to be to protect themselves. You know, we are not particularly expensive. Symphorks, we're, we're, we're uh, and we're not, we're not cheap. You know, we're in the middle, maybe, maybe a little high middle but we're not the highest. We're definitely not the lowest um, because we know what it costs to get the work done right. And there is a, there is a charge for that. And so if you look at us and our, our contemporaries, we're all about the same price. There is a, there's a certain amount of money you can expect that people need to pay to be able to protect themselves. And just, we've talked about this before. There's a video. I think we say like, you know, how much should it cost? Again, that number is somewhere. It does change over time. Inflation impacts it, but you should be paying somewhere around 120 bucks to 150 bucks a user in Colorado. Uh, so per person per month, that's about what you should be budgeting to implement the correct information technology. If you're, if you do the math real quick and you're paying far beneath that, you are not, there's a lot you're not doing correctly. There's a lot of gaps. Uh, you don't have good, good it and, and, and you cannot expect that things are running truly well in your organization or that you're covered. I just can tell you right now, there's no way you have good IT if you're not paying somewhere in that range because it can't be done correctly for less than that because I know what the costs are, the, the real costs. Um, you know, in other states, if you're talking New York, California, that number's going to be a lot higher. Um, you know, there may be places in the United States where the, 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 the cost is a bit lower. But my point is, is that that's, they're not paying this. I, I've come into a lot of organizations. They're paying like a tenth of that. There was one, I'm not going to call them out, but there was one that was paying. I think they were literally, when we gave them a proposal, I think their budget was literally a tenth of what uh, uh, we were proposing. And we were pro proposing, I think, a few thousand dollars a month, you know, three, maybe four thousand dollars a month to do their IT, and they were paying a few hundred. And that means that nobody had put together a realistic budget for what it would take to actually properly run information technology for that group. Um you know, and my hope for them, right, is that they'll, you know, they'll, they'll get to go back to their board at some point, get a more realistic budget put in place so they can actually do the things that they need to do to protect themselves and the, the people they serve. Um, and then there may be an opportunity for us to talk again in the future, or maybe if not us, somebody else. But 
again, what I see a lot is that they just do not have professionals guiding them and they don't have a budget put in place. And so it's kind of ad hoc and it, it puts them at risk, like serious risk. There's a couple things that, um, that I pulled from what you were saying. One, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about security, right? That, that, that term gets used all the time. Cybersecurity. We're talking about your your IT and keeping your company secure. Now, if we're if you're hiring actual security guards to cover a perimeter around your physical a physical location, then obviously the the amount that you pay is going to have a direct impact to how secure uh, you actually are. If you're paying a, a guy you know ten bucks an hour, he, he's probably out there eating a sandwich on his iPhone and you know, the likelihood that he's going to be able to really stop somebody who's really trying to get in there is, is pretty low. If it's a couple of kids in the neighborhood, you know, who are kicking a ball through, he might be able to stop them. But if you're, if you have, you know, high end security, you're paying them good money. They have technology, they're set up, they set up a perimeter around your place. uh, Then you can feel more secure and the likelihood that somebody's going to break that barrier is a lot, is a lot Mm -hmm. lower. And am I tracking with you on that? Yeah. And it's not just the ability to keep it secure. It's the ability to recover if that security is breached. Right. So, you know, this poor city has been, I mean, it's the fifth now and I'm still seeing news articles that are saying that they're dealing with problems and I'm sure there are IT people are putting as much work and effort into this as they possibly can to recover it. And I know that these are complex problems. And I, again, I feel for them because we've been here, we've had to bail customers out of these situations and it's very difficult and it's very complicated. And so again, to the, I, to the Dallas IT people, you know, we're, we're, we're rooting for you. You know what I mean? Um, and we're, we're hoping to make this video so that people understand that, you know, you guys do need to, uh, you do need to be given the tools to actually be effective. You know, we're in your court. Um, you know, I want to point out from this article, the police department was affected. It looks like uh, utilities. They said the library was affected. And this most re- this other article I read today said that, um, what is it? I'm going to quote from it here. It says the city's code compliance services department is also seeing delayed responses and is unable to process single family and multifamily tenant registration. Uh, if you're planning a garage sale, the city said you'll have to get your permit in person and they give their, the place to go. They, it also said that the, the city can't receive applications or payments for development services, permitting, public works, or zoning. I mean, the impact that this is having on the people of Dallas is, is significant. It's, this, is a real, this is real world consequences for cyber attacks and for not having yeah. the ability to rapidly recover from them um, for whatever reason. They're, they're not in a position where they can rapidly recover. The only way to be able to prevent this and rapidly recover is to put the right tools in at the right place and to manage them correctly and to implement best practice throughout the organization. And that just takes time, money, and resources. It just it just does. Yeah, that's that's funny. That's the second thing that I was going to mention that I got out of the the, the previous things that you were saying. Um, you know, one that illustration, and then the second thing is that not only is this affecting the business, this is affecting you know when it comes to government agencies, emergency services, it's affecting the people. There's that trickle down effect, right? The people who benefit from the services of that business. So when we're talking about a like a small business or, um, you know, a corporate uh, uh, a company, uh, then obviously, you know, if they're a manufacturer or some wh- whatever, whatever consumer, uh, uh, however consumers deal with that business, they're being affected. But when we're talking about government agencies, then everybody really who lives in that city, who, you know, who, who pays taxes to the city. Yeah. Who, who benefits they're, from emergency services is, the is feeling it, right? Yeah. yeah, they're the victims, right? I mean, you know, that's – it's. they were saying that the police department, when I when I first saw this hack, their ability to actually dispatch um, through their computer system was down. So they were having to 
write down people's information on on pad and paper so it's like you call in and you're like so i'm you know i'm actively being attacked or whatever it's like actively being attacked like where are you at and they're trying to write down your address and then they're having to like get on the radio and say like you need to go to this address and you know, hopefully they they didn't say okay wait is that a is that a is that a y or is that a t i don't know if i wrote that down right like it makes you worried like this is what you're dealing with here you know people's lives are on the line here this is this is potentially very serious now i don't know that anybody actually lost their life over this or anything like that and again i don't want to sensationalize that but i'm just trying to say that like it can be at that level of consequence right it can we're talking about police we're talking about fire you know what i mean uh this is important it's very important so um if if you don't have it handled correctly the like we said earlier the victims are the people that the the that use these services and this can have a profound impact on you know their life well that's a great point to pause it and to uh and to wrap this whole thing up as we always do with let's make it simple travis dallas got hacked <laughs> yes they did. so in 30 seconds or less give us some lessons that we can learn uh, from what happened to the city of Dallas. Okay. It's important that you find a good partner. If it's internal, it's external, find somebody you trust that uh, you can sit down with and that can help you actually design your IT. Uh, make sure that you are investing in it correctly, that you actually have a realistic budget in place, right? These are some lessons we can learn from, I don't know about from this hack, but in general, from hacks like this, you need to fund this stuff. You need the right tools. You need the right people. You need to take it seriously and you need somebody to help you. So go find somebody. Whoever it is, go find them. There's professionals in Dallas. There's professionals in Atlanta. We're everywhere. Go find us. Talk to us. We want to help you.